it's possible for you, yes, you, to truly run a 500 billion parameter AI model without having any expensive server equipment or anything like that. This AM5 system can run one of the most advanced AI reasoning models available today, but this model is running entirely offline under your control self-contained. You can reprogram it. You can do all sorts of fun things. No subscriptions, no lock-in. The software is set up uh, pretty awesome. And for now, it's ahead of what you can do with Olama or LM Studio or Amuse AI, at least right now. We at Level 1, the Level 1 community at large, have one of the best in the world quants for a model that can run on an ordinary system like this. I'll show you how you could build your own personal thinking machine. It's mostly a software thing that has a deep enough context window to handle complex questions and complex asks without hallucination. Reasoning models that can work across tens of thousands of tokens, maybe more, depending on your hardware. Even if you're an AI doomer, hey, here's your chance, I can show you how to build an AI ally that's gonna work for you during the coming Kafka-esque nightmare. If the Terminator's coming, we gotta know how to build the Summer Glau Terminator, am I right? That's level one. Come for the awesome Promethean software, but stay for the hope that remains. So what's our actual setup here? This is an AM5 9800X 3D with 128 gigabytes of crucial RAM. That's two 64 gig DIMMs and an RTX 3090 with 24 gigs of VRAM. About any modern CPU will do, and sure, a 16 core CPU would be better than the 9800X 3D for this task, but the 9800X 3D is fast enough and it gets the job done. An Intel CPU would also be fine here because, uh, yeah. I'm using two sticks of memory instead of four because with four DIMMs on desktop platforms from both Intel and AMD, it can be a little problematic to get four uh, sticks of memory to operate at higher speed. I do have another system with 192 gigs with so four 48 gig DIMMs, but it's a little fiddly to get that running. And the name of the game with AI here is memory bandwidth. And the memory bandwidth, because it's running on CPU, matters a lot. I mean, we're using the GPU too, but... Yeah, it needs that. We need the 3090 because it's got 24 gigs of VRAM and some of the AI is running from the 24 gigs of RAM on the on the GPU, but mostly it's running on the CPU. The GPU does give us the pretty deep context though, up to about 48,000 tokens if you get creative and the KV cache and that sort of stuff. It, it basically acts as a cache to help us speed things up. And DeepSeek, which is the model that I'm using here, uh, R528, it, it's not using all 500 billion parameters at once because it's a mixture of experts model. And that's good for us in a performance context because I'm trying to get it to run here on relatively modest hardware. So let me show you what I've done. I've pasted a huge Wikipedia article here in the UI about general relativity. And the model is capable of summarizing what's here in the article. I've also altered this article. There's a lot of information here that's not in the training set, but we can ask it questions about what has been added to this. And this is how you get AI without hallucinations. You give the AI context for the questions that you're gonna ask it. And so the answers are buried in there somewhere, we think probably maybe. And it can also uh, make inferences from that. It can infer things and, and do stuff. With, with Olama and LM Studio, you're often pretty limited. You don't really normally have super deep context, maybe a few thousand words or tokens worth of context. It really depends on the model and the parameters and a bunch of stuff that you're doing. One of the pieces of text that I added in here in a general relativity article was, my grandma only bakes snozberry cookies. Then I asked this model what my grandma's favorite type of cookie was. And it was able to uh, you know, it sort of parsed that correctly and it predicted that my grandma's favorite cookie was snozberry, given that this is the only kind that she bakes. It's an important, subtle distinction there. This model has been quantized to about 20% of the size of the original model, but it still knew that snozberries was a reference to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and it added that to its response. The how-to on the forum has three models that we quantized that can be run basically the same way as I'm running this here. Now for DeepSeek specifically, uh, it's some of the best, probably maybe the best, if perplexity is the measure, of all the different versions of DeepSeek in the world. So being able to run this small one, you can download it from Hugging Face right now, it's probably one of the best if perplexity is the measure. The other video that we did on this was our process for getting this set up, where we used a really big server and you should check that out because it was really interesting. And so we use that server to make the model to upload to Hugging Face that you can run on normal hardware. This approach to shrinking the model here uh, is 
quantization. There's another approach called distillation. You may have played with distilled versions of DeepSeek, and you can run those with Olama or uh, LM Studio or Muse AI. It's a different approach than what we took to run the model here on normal hardware. It's a true 500 billion parameter model. Fundamentally, though, those, those distilled models are not deep seek. They don't have the same functionality to predict the next token. They don't really work exactly the same way. Think of distillation as having a big model act as a teacher to a smaller model. So deep seek teaches Llama or deep seek teaches Quinn. Our quantized creation with a variable bit weight doesn't work in Olama or LM Studio. You need different software. Enter iklama.cpp. This is a fork of llama.cpp from Kalrakal. I think that's how you say that on GitHub. From looking at the project page here and the change logs, the main aim here is optimizing it to run better in this kind of desktop scenario. I mean, in the cloud, they want to pack thousands of people on their giant GPU clusters, but here, one user. So these kinds of optimizations on the project page it go a long way to making it run better. So let me show you how to get it set up. Getting started is pretty easy. Uh, it'll work on about any distro. I'm showing how to do it on Ubuntu 24.04 uh, LTS, and it's basically easy mode for getting this up and running. The main gotcha is if you got a 5000 series GPU, you may or may not need the 575 driver from NVIDIA. I mean, theoretically, the 570 driver should work. Ubuntu 24.04 LTS, when you check the proprietary checkbox, will install the 570 drivers for three, four, 5000 series cards. Maybe for 5000 series cards, you want to, you want to, do 575, but if you don't, then that's easy mode. On the 5000 series drivers, the reason my hesitation here is because I had a little bit of trouble. Um, but the newer Linux kernel, the Ubuntu OEM kernel, helped with that as well. So there's a step in the how-to to manually install the newer kernel if you have a 5000 series driver, and you're going to go that MIT slash GPL route for the 575 version of the NVIDIA driver. The new drivers also do work with the 3090, so if you just want to do it on hard mode with the bleeding edge drivers, you can do that. But it should work out of the box with the most up-to-date installer. What about AMD? How, how does AMD GPU hardware compare? This is my 7900 XDX. Are they left out? Yeah, they kind of are left out for now. This system that I've got here with our 7900 XDX, it's 24 gigs of VRAM. We've been trying to get it to be a comparable setup. It should work, and the Rockham software stack is closer than ever. The problem is that uh, for our quantized models, it needs special stuff on the Llama.cpp backend, which we're getting from Caracal. Our quantized model needs that stuff plumbed in for the Rockham stack, though, and we don't have that. AMD, for their part, they are doing well. I mean, the Vulkan backend for Llama.cpp is actually faster than CUDA, even on NVIDIA hardware, for these really long context windows. That's certainly quite the engineering feather in AMD's cap and probably should be a whole other video on its own. RDNA plus Rockham though, I'm still struggling to get it working here like it should. Now, I'm, I'm getting not a number and weird results that I don't really have time to get into in this video, but if you wanna help with that, by all means, hit us up in the forum and uh, let's figure it out because I think it can work. From here, you'll use Git to download the fork of Llama.cpp, Kalrakow's repository, basically. That's the next step in the guide. And you can decide which model you want to run. Now, I've listed three here in the how-to and on the forum, but there are other models that will work here with Kalrakow's version of Llama.cpp. You're not beholden to DeepSeek. If you do download DeepSeek, it's about 116 gigabytes, as I've shown here, and it's the thinking model. That's... It's, 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 that's what you do when you click the thought processing thing. You see it thinking about the request. If you've done the Olama thing or messed with Open Web UI before, thinking that you're going to need to also get Open Web UI, you don't need that. You, you're not going to need that for this setup. When you run the command that I gave you, it starts up this Web UI. It looks kind of similar to Open Web UI, but it's actually much more uh, simplistic. It's available on the local machine, or if you specify your LAN IP address, it will be accessible to other machines on your LAN. So, it's pretty straightforward. It's basically just the one command, go there in your browser and you're, you're ready to start. Um, and it is pretty awesome that you can access it from other computers on your land. So you can just set this off in a corner and, and, and do whatever. Um, the port that it's running on, you can specify as well, 8080, 8083. You feed it articles for this long context and ask it questions without much fear of hallucination because the answers come from the articles. You know, if you've got a Shakespearean play or something like that, you can paste it and ask it to explain it to you. This is the basis of using AI as a tool to sharpen your mind. When you feed it articles like this, that cuts down on the chances of hallucination because it has the context for what you're asking it. That's 
the goal here is to have these very long context windows and to have a setup like this. And this is also the basis of AI as a tool to sharpen your mind. It's something to, that you use to think more and engage critically, not think less, as people tend to use AI. Correct. It's a starting point also to build something more sophisticated. You can go from here into a setup that has tool calling. Tool calling? That's a thing where you can tell the AI if the user sounds like they're asking you to search Wikipedia or they're searching for an answer that should be on Wikipedia or on the internet or something trustworthy, then it will search and read the results. It'll read the results in as context and then try to answer the query. And that's much better than asking the AI to remember Wikipedia and getting an hallucinated fever dream response. Uh, but before we have the tool calling and fun stuff like that, we have to crawl and then we can walk, and then we can run with tool calling. And the how-to on the forum, that's the beginning of using AI as a thinking sharpening tool, your thinking sharpening tool. But keep in mind, ultimately, these are quantized models, which means they are less precise, and their answers will be less precise. If you wanna do something like code generation, uh, you can kinda do it, but it's not gonna be anywhere near as good as a Q4 or a Q8 model, because the perplexity is a lot higher. So just keep that in mind. There's no such thing as a free lunch. This is humanity's opportunity with AI and without any corrosive effects from corporate influence. I mean, they can't help but try to pry their way into your wallet if they have access to it. Even if you're strongly negative on AI, worried about everything negative that comes with it. And, uh, you know, the downsides of a contemporary industrial revolution, if that's what you're thinking of, then any hope that you have left is right here running locally. This what I'm showing you. This is our hope for the future for the hope of having intelligent tools that you control. I'm not even talking about DeepSeek specifically, just the ability to uh, run these, the agency to run intelligent modules directed solely by you. Eventually, we will have the tools to do distributed model training and distributed AI training, at least maybe. I mean, think, think uh, something like, you know, randos seizing the means of computation, like the folding at home project, but for AI, but that's maybe a different conversation. But there are a lot of like-minded folks out there that are doing amazing things just like you, and so can you. Those beautiful randos, Kalrakow, Ubergarm, Bartowski, and more. Uh, Turbo Derp gets a special mention because they're working on quants for XL Llama V3, which is a whole other conversation. We've also got Kimi V2. That's a one trillion parameter model. We're working on that. I'm also grateful for uh, Keoxia and Gigabyte in supporting this project. When we started working on this, I ran out of space really quickly. Gigabyte stepped in and loaned me a chassis that could run CXL so I could do big memory stuff. And that's on our Intel Xeon 6980P processors. And Keoxia, well, they sent over the mother load of fast, high-performance PCIe Gen 5 CM storage. This is the forefront of AI. We don't have, uh, you know, uh, venture capital, but we do have me. And now we can take that, what we did on those monster systems, and the output of that, and run it on an AM5 system. And so this is a good path to go down. Who knew? Randos like us are able to pluck some shockingly good, low-hanging optimization fruit out of the air and move the state of the art forward. And that's part of why I think this work is so important. It provides open software infrastructure toward a future where everyone has a chance to benefit from AI. You can run it on your own hardware and set your own agenda and use it, you know, your AI agent to defend and exhaust corporate AI agents that are looking uh, to win a war of attrition against you, which is, I mean, that's, that's, <laughs> that's the whole thing with Kafka. This is Kafka 2.0. It's interesting you get a little bit more insight if you do this on how the prediction engine works and how the intelligent works and you run it in your own gear at the edge and sort of understand the AI and maybe be a little more understanding of it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing that we can do this. And again, big thanks to Keoxia and Gigabyte and viewers like you, uh, you know, wanting to build a better tomorrow and share knowledge and do a lot of interesting stuff around these kinds of projects. I'm not an AI doomer. I remain optimistic. And uh, I understand why people are, are skeptical. I mean, corporations are corporations going to corporation, right? I mean, they're going to do everything they can to wring every bit of value out of their customers. And the big AI corporations are, are really no different. But with tools like this and with relatively modest hardware here running on my desk, we can seize our own destiny and forge our own future. One where, you know, we have power over our technology and not the big corporations. So... It's, it's a lot of fun, and for that reason alone, I'm very excited. Join us in the forum. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out, and you can find me in the Level 1 forums.